Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to draw a realistic dog nose in graphite. Now I like to use a very specific technique in terms of the layering and how to use the pencils in order to get as much detail and more importantly the 3D shape of the nose when working with my graphite pencils. But before we get into that process, I just want to mention that at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing my two favourite erasers that I like to use for my subtracting detail technique. And you're going to see this throughout this tutorial. The technique of erasing graphite to add individual details is something that can really add so much more depth and realism to your drawing, regardless of whatever element it is you're working on, fur, nose, eyes, any part of it but I don't use the erasers straight from the packet. I actually adapt those to make my details even finer. So if that bit is of interest, that's gonna be shared at the end of this video. But throughout this tutorial, you're gonna be able to see those erasers in action using that subtraction technique, and I'll be explaining what I'm doing at that time. So my very first step is to outline the shape of the nose. I wanna make sure that the shape of the nostrils are right and that the placement is right. Now this for me, with any medium that I'm working in, is really important. The nose is one of the main features on the face, so if the nostrils or the shape of the nose is not right, it's going to really draw the viewer's eye to that and it's very obvious. So my first step and my first biggest tip is always make sure the shape of the nose, your proportions, your perspective is spot on. Once I've done that, my second process is to map in a base layer using graphite powder. Now I uploaded a video here to YouTube a couple of weeks ago and it was how to draw the fur here on this dog's face. So if you would like to see that and I really do go through all of the graphite powder technique showing you how you can make your own graphite powder, I will link that in the description below and I'll have a card pop up here. Now in order to achieve the base layer we want to build up the values gradually. Look at how careful I'm being with this applicator. This is just a standard um, soft tool, the small applicator, but since then I do use eye makeup applicators and they work exactly in the same way, but they are significantly cheaper. Now what I'm doing here is I actually have a couple of grades of darker values of my graphite powder that I've made myself, which I've just mentioned. So again, if you would like to see that, the video of this black lab that I uploaded to YouTube earlier would be of interest. All I'm doing here is mapping in my main lights and darks. This is going to help me to build up the general shape and form of the nose. And for me personally, if I get this in at the very early stage, I'm far more likely to follow that reference photo. And therefore, my drawing, the dog nose, is going to be even more accurate, which to me is my most important thing. I want to make sure that I'm getting as much detail and realism as I possibly can throughout this process. But the one thing that's going to be very apparent here is I am not starting off trying to add my details in from the very beginning. Regardless of the medium that I'm working with, my base layers are so important to the process. And I find that sometimes the base layers can be skipped over because it, it might be given the illusion that, well, because we're going over the top with our graphite pencils, that they, the base layers aren't as important. But for me, it's your foundation that your details are put on top of. So this is a crucial layer. Once I've built up that nice base foundation and you can really see here that the nose is already starting to look three dimensional and that's all because of where I've placed my lights and my darks. My next step is to make the darkest part of the nose as dark as what's required. Now the reason being is I do find that if you have the darkest element in first, it's easier to judge your values. You then know how bright your highlights need to be because you've already got the darkest element in. So this is always going to be my next stage. Now a big tip when you are doing this with anything, even if it's dark fur that you're drawing, is don't jump to your darkest pencils first. So for instance, I will start off with something like a HB, I'll progress up to a 2B and, and work my way up, eventually up to a 6B or an 8B. But if you jump into the darkest pencils first, because they are softer, you will end up with something called graphite shine. Now, graphite shine doesn't cause any issues. It doesn't affect the artwork, but some artists are really bothered by it. Now, I personally um, am not bothered by it. I don't think for me it causes any issues, but it is something to be aware of. I do try and reduce the chance of that happening. And one way of doing that is to make sure that you're building up your dark values layer by layer.
So what I'm now starting to do, once I've got the dark part of the nostrils in, you can see that I've mapped in the midline, which most dog noses have. This is going to give me a really good reference point and show me exactly where the right side of the nose is and the left side of the nose is. Then it's a matter of building up those values and reinforcing the 3D shape of the nose. Just like when I'm working on dark elements, I'm still gradually going up in my layers. So I'm starting off with pencils like a HB and working my way up from there. Now, if you're working on something that's particularly light, you might want to start off with a pencil like a 4H or a 2H, just so that then you are always making sure that you don't go too dark too early on. And that's one consideration to have throughout any drawing process when using graphite. It's a lot easier to preserve the white colour of the paper on areas that you've got bright and then build up the dark values gradually rather than putting a dark layer of graphite down and then trying to erase that graphite. Because however good an eraser is, it's never going to get it back to as white or as bright as that paper was before the graphite was applied. Now one thing you'll notice here is I'm working on small sections and for me that's really important. I find I'm far more motivated and likely to end up with a portrait that's more photorealistic and closer to that reference photo because if I work on a large area and individual layers I do end up becoming a bit daunted by the process. You start drawing a little slower. So if you do find that that's something that's happening break that down into nice small manageable chunks. So this is the first part, as you can see, where I'm using one of my must-have erasers. Now this again is one of the ones that's going to feature at the end of the video, so I can show you exactly how I like to prepare this eraser, because there are specific things that I like to do with this eraser to get my nice fine lines. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just starting to subtract that graphite, and it's now adding lighter individual details. This here is my second must-have eraser, and again, this also takes some preparation to get the type of details that I want to subtract. I'm being very careful with both erasers because I don't want to erase too much graphite. Now that being said, when you do start using the erasers for this technique, you might accidentally remove more graphite than you intended, but that really doesn't matter. You can just go back over with your graphite pencils and soften out any edges if you do end up and making some of those areas too large. But the main consideration here is look at how the highlights are not rigid. They're not one set rectangular shape. They're still following the underlying shape of the nose. Where the nostril curves over towards the front surface of the nose, I really want to indicate at that. If I indicate at that at these very early stages, each additional detailed layer that I add is going to really reinforce the 3D shape of the nose. Now I have already touched on it here slightly, but if you have a particularly bright highlight on the nose, it is a good idea to leave the white of the paper showing through. So for instance, some noses may have a really bright white highlight on the top surface of the nose. If that was particularly bright, just like the reflections in the eyes on this dog, I would have left the white of the paper first. Then I can add the lighter shades of graphite on top. I then know that for that one bright highlight, I can't go any lighter because I'm using the white of the paper at that first layer. Now this is something again which will add so much more contrast to your piece. Now when I'm working on colour based mediums like pastels or acrylics, I still always focus on my contrasts. You want to get your darks dark enough and your lights light enough and this is even more so with graphite. Because it is a black and white medium, if your contrasts aren't right, it's very very obvious. You don't have the colour side of things to sort of hide behind. So the contrast here is something that we really do need to focus on right from the beginning. If you're finding that the nose that you're drawing or any element is not quite sort of 3D enough, it hasn't got as much of that form or depth, it's usually because the contrast isn't right and there aren't enough layers. As you can see here, there are many layers that have gone into just this lower part of the nose and I still haven't finished yet. I may go back across these areas later on to, eve to add my final details. So I want to really stress that this is a layering process. We can't just expect to get this level of realism with two or three layers.
So before we progress onto the other side of the nose, if the tips and techniques that I've shared here so far have been useful, then I really would appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up and a like, because it makes a real difference. It then tells YouTube that it's a, a helpful video and they will then share it to more people. So again, the process here on this side of the face is very much the same. I'm still working with my lighter pencils and building up my values from there. The one thing that you'll see here though is currently I'm starting to draw in some of those darker creases of the nose as well. Now on many tutorials I speak about reference points and this is always the case regardless of any medium I'm working on. If there's one specific detail, maybe a shadow or a highlight, a specific curl in the fur if I was drawing something like a poodle, I would always map in those first so I knew exactly where I was when I was glancing at my reference photo and back at my artwork. So now that I've got the lower part of the nose about 80% complete, my next stage is to start working on the top part of the nose and then I can merge the two areas together. What I'm starting to do here with a lighter pencil, this will be something like a H or a HB, I'm just starting to use here as you can see some small round circular movements just to start to build in the initial layer of texture but more importantly I'm reinforcing my next darker layer. Now what you're going to see me do in the next couple of seconds here is actually just go over these areas with more of the darker graphite powder. It wasn't until I first started using the pencils with those small circular movements that I felt I needed to go a lot darker. This is something again that we need to judge all the time. Don't have that fear of what if I go too dark and I can't lighten it because quite often that actually makes whatever we're drawing end up far too light and the contrast will not be sharp. So here it was far easier and quicker for me to darken these edges with more of the darker graphite powder and my soft tool than it would have been continuously using those small circular movements. Now you can see I've gone back in with those circular movements here over the top of that dark layer of graphite powder. Now the small circular movements I find really useful because it helps to build up the first layer of texture on the nose. Now the texture of the nose is going to vary from dog to dog. Some dogs have drier noses, others look like they have a wetter, smoother nose. If you've got a nose that is more textured with that bumpier appearance, you're going to have to continue to build up these circular movements with each additional layer and you'll find that the darker pencils that you progress up through will help to build up more of that texture. So you want to be making sure that you're moving that pencil in that round circular way from these first few layers that is certainly going to help to build up more of that shape of the nose. So as you can see here it now just is a matter of reinforcing my contrasts. I'm still making sure that none of my pencil strokes are straight lines. If you look at these dark creases on the right nostril those there are curving away from the inner part of the nostril and over across the surface of the nose. If it's the front surface of the nose, it's curving down towards the midline of the nose. If it's the top surface of the nose, it curves up towards the eyes. This again is going to help with that 3D shape of the nose. These dark creases are really important. So now that I've slowed this footage down here, you can really see how these tinier little um, circular movements are helping to build up the shape and form of that nose. I'm really paying attention to where do these darker shadows and the details have to be. Again, because we want to follow that light source and the contrast. The shadows and the highlights are not random and this isn't just for drawing dog noses, it would be for the fur as well. Where those highlights and shadows hit that part of the animal are being determined in the placement by the underlying structure. So in this case, it's where we're currently working on the top flat surface of the nose, where the highlight is just above the nostrils, that's where it curves over, and then the nostrils on that front surface would be flatter. So we need to make sure that the highlights and the shadows are positioned in the right way so that again we capture the 3D shape. So one big tip here with this area of the side of the nose where you can see I'm really reinforcing those two dark edges, it's really important that you get the angle of that part of the nose right. We do have a tendency to make those a bit flatter so they're a bit more horizontal. Well what will happen is the nose will end up looking very wide. So that there is one of the more important parts that we have to make sure the perspective just like the nostrils and that the perspective and proportion is correct. So again, this slower footage is showing you how random my hand placement is, but that I'm still using the small circular movements. This is going to really help to build up so much more of that texture.
Now the one thing you'll notice here is that I've worked from light to dark. This is the one of the brightest parts of the nose so again I didn't want to contaminate that paper with too much of a dark layer. In a moment you're going to see that I'm going to switch back over to my erasers and I'm going to use the subtraction technique to add in details like those individual little highlighted bumps. So one method of erasing subtle details is with this here. This is a putty kneaded eraser. Now you can actually manipulate the end of these because it feels a little bit like blue tack. So you can actually create a fine edge on the end or more of like a, a narrow cylinder shape to remove either fine lines or just light dots. But I do find that the kneaded eraser, it is one of my must have erasers, but it doesn't get details as light because it's not able to apply, you know, you can't apply too much pressure with it because you'll end up just flattening out the end of that eraser because it is just a putty. So it works really well for erasing the muted, more subtle highlights. But for brighter highlights where they need to be a little bit more intricate, I like using this here, which is the battery operated um, eraser by Derwent. So let's jump straight into this Derwent eraser and I can show you the adaptations that I do to the end of the eraser to get the fine details with those small circular um, subtraction techniques that you're seeing on the nose. So you simply take out the silver section, you put in one of your refills, one of those erasers, and it slips easily back into that Derwent battery operated eraser. All I'm doing here is using a Stanley knife. You could use a craft knife as well. And I'm just starting to chip away at the end of that eraser to create a fine point. Now, this may seem like a little bit of a waste, but these refills are fairly um, inexpensive to buy. And for me, in order to get those very small circular but bright details, it's worth it. I think because it adds so much extra realism to the portrait and in this case, the nose. So there you can see it's got that really nice filed rounded point. What I'm going to do here is just use some graphite powder just to apply that base layer to sort of replicate what we've got on that nose already. And then I'm going to show you how I like to hold this battery operated eraser to create the type of subtraction techniques that I'm using here. When you had just seen me use this in this tutorial, you saw that my hand was blocking quite a lot of what I was actually doing. And that's because you do have to use this eraser at a very upright angle so that you are very precise with where that fine tip that we've created is in contact in the right area on the portrait. Now, what I've had to do here is chisel off a little more because can you see the eraser marks are not circular? And that's because there was just a slight harsher edge on one side. So I just needed to neaten that up. So what I would recommend doing is have a scrap piece of paper to the side as I've currently working on here. If you do want to test whether or not you've got that nice shaved point or not. But as you can see here, once you've got that, it creates these really nice small dots. This subtraction technique using this eraser is a really good way of adding more detail. If when we go back to that tutorial in a moment, you're going to see that I go round these lighter markings with my darker pencils to reinforce that bumpy texture. So onto the Tombow Mono Eraser, and this is my second must-have eraser. Now again, I also adapt the end of this. I'm using the knife to adapt the end of this eraser, but unlike with the battery eraser, I am only removing one side. So it's got a diagonal edge. It's this change in shape of the this specific eraser that's gonna really enable us to erase fine lines such as whiskers or individual hairs, or in this case, those highlighted creases on the dog's nose. Now, how much pressure you apply here to this diagonal edge is gonna vary in terms of how thick this line is gonna be. Minimal pressure will give you a finer line. If you wanted like a thicker whisker, as you can see here, you would just apply more pressure. Now, the one thing to bear in mind with this is just like the Derwent battery operated version, there will come a point where the end of that eraser will start to become rounded off because that natural tooth of the paper and the way that the erasers will just wear away, you will have to keep on reinforcing the end of that shape. So I think personally, even though I am cutting off a small amount of the eraser, when you're trying to draw details like this, it is 100% worth it for me because I personally think that it's quite hard to get these kinds of lighter details in graphite. But I have certainly found these two methods make the entire process much easier.
So after that, it is just a matter of reinforcing everything, more particularly darkening up my details around these lighter highlights. I do like to add the highlights and that subtraction technique with these two erasers at various points so that I can add even more depth to the nose. You don't want all of your highlights to be the same value. So not every little dot on the top of the nose is going to be as bright as some of the ones that are next to it. So again, that's something in terms of the contrast to really bear in mind. So I really do hope that the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video are useful. I really would appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a real difference. And if you want to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. Now, since uploading my graphite tutorials to YouTube over the last couple of weeks, I have had a couple of questions asking whether or not I'm adding a graphite tier to my Patreon channel. I already offer in-depth slower tutorials in pastels and acrylics and I am considering adding a graphite tier to that. If that would be of interest I would really appreciate to hear that in the comments below just so I can get an idea of the um, amount of interest that that might get and if it's certainly something that um, people would like I would be more than happy to offer that on my Patreon channel. If or when I launch my graphite tier on Patreon, I will make sure that I pin that in the comments below so that you know when it is live. Now, if my Patreon tutorials are of interest, as I say, I've currently got pastels and acrylic tutorials there. I will link that in the description below. But if you have any art related questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube at the weekend. And as always, thank you so much for watching.